innocent people. Old men. Women. Even children. Bridget. Why, Mingo? Why? That shining world you called civilization passed a law. Twenty shillings for each and every Indian scalp. And they call us savages. That law was passed during the French War, Mingo. And it was a bounty for Shawnee scalps. Not Cherokee. Tell them it was a mistake, Daniel. Make them understand your law doesn't apply to them. Who would do this? There were five of them. Five white butchers. They opened fire without warning and kept firing until... it was safe to use their knives. The old woman took how we saw it all. They left her her life because her hair was white and of no value. They will be found, Daniel. And when they are, your law will burn with them. Cherokee fire won't burn that law, Mingo. But a trial in a hangman's noose might. You've got to find those scalp hunters before your people do. It's the only way we can make sure it won't happen again. We'll have to move fast, Daniel. Scouts won't give us much time. to a turn, Toffee. Better dig in. I'm not hungry. Then try this. Guaranteed to cure anything. Even a bad appetite. Nothing will cure what we did to those people, Gore. Nothing. So what is a dead Indian? Give or take a few. You sound like a man with a conscience. Toffee, don't, don't call me that. And you look like a man in need of a drink. That's... Mm. My, my. We are getting touchy, aren't we? Best cure for that is exercise. Like a long walk. All the way to Salem. Why me? Well, someone has to exchange our uh, souvenirs for the bounty money. And I'm afraid that our faces are too well known in the Carolinas. I collect your bounty money, then what? I could disappear, you know. You could, Tuffy. But your diary won't, will it? Someone's coming. Scatter. We'll meet up river at the rendezvous. All of us. I'm just passing through. Just an excuse. That's all I need. I got away, Daniel. We won't be able to pick up the trail until morning. But at least we have this one. Bingo. Let me kill him now, Daniel. Let me kill him. Right now. did waken in her sleep to find the accused Simon Gore and a number of others with him engaged in an armed surprise attack on her village. All there were killed some two score in number, saving only this woman called Tokali. 
And she was deemed not worth the killing for her hair was white and therefore would not bring a payment of bounty money. Still turns my gut over. Taking the scalps of peaceful Indians just because some fool Virginia magistrate put a hair bounty on the Shawnee. Well, according to Simon Gore there, hair is hair just so it's long and black. And that's why scalp money is not the answer, Sergeant. Just an excuse for murder, and I hope you take that word back to Salem with you. If I get back to Salem, I still can't believe the Cherokee will just sit by while we take Go out of their reach. That's why I'm going with you, Sergeant, remember? Daniel's personal guarantee that my people won't know where Gore is until after a Salem hangman springs the trap. Thank you, Martin. Tell me, Bill. You think those primitive scratches on a piece of paper will put me on the gallows? Call it another nail in your coffin, Gore. One thing I'm sorry for. Them that was with him. They're still loose. Get him out of here, Sergeant. Get him out of here before I forget why I sent for you. All right, Gore, let's get started. Get him on that scalpel, Mingo. Make sure. Time is for dogs and apes, Boone. Man has forever. So I won't say goodbye. You put these on me, Boone. I'll remember. This side of the gallows or beyond. I'll remember. Sorry to interrupt your dinner, Sergeant, but I think we'd better keep moving. Moving? In the dead of night? What's wrong? I don't know, a feeling, a presence, something in the night that isn't of the night, something nearby. <laughs> in the end, if a man believed in such things, he'd next be putting flesh and bones to spirits and arms and legs to shadows. Break camp, Sergeant. The sooner the better. You're the man. Get your gear together. And uh, next you'll have me running all the way to my own execution with a foot in there twisted off to boot. Get up, Gore. Oh, there you go again. I never knew a man with so many hateful things to say. For a man on his way to the grave, you get a large bit of nerve, I'll give you that. Well, we're all on that same weary road, Sergeant. Sometimes it's a comfort knowing just how far there's left to travel. Stop breathing, gentlemen, if you please. Now, gentlemen, your firearms. By the fingertips. You too, Indian. Gently... Much, much better. You took your time. I wanted to make sure it was the right time. You'll find the key to these crude reminders of civilized society in the sergeant's jacket pocket. Such a waste in All that rushing through the forest, and here we are, already at the end of the march. You see, sergeant? It wasn't my grave we were headed for after all. Hey! Get here! Bad manners. You tried to leave without an invite. Remember, gentlemen, it must look like the Cherokee dropped by. It's much better this way, mon ami. Guns make too much noise. Please, don't do it. Don't do it. doing out of the cabin after dark? You know what your mom and me told you. It's all right. I knew you were coming. You heard me? Uh-oh, but try to hold you. Supper's ready. And don't you just stay out here stargazing all evening. Daniel. Hey, Tom. What happened? Get him inside. Oh, we can't risk having the children here send Simpson and Addison yet. You back till Mingo's been hurt and I need their help. Here, here, get a rifle. My mom had a father. Hurry, son. I'm right, Mom. 
Dan, do you think we... I'm sure, now. Hurry along. Come on, I'll come quickly. behind. Well, Mr. Boone, we meet again. And in the bosom of your own family. I'm surprised at you, sending your wife and children out into the night. I promised you that I'd renew our acquaintance again, Boone. And now your Indian friend has led me right to your door. How convenient. You put manacles on my wrist, a hangman's noose around my neck, and now you lay your hands on me. Now, I can't be content with just your life, can I? I take it you're talking about my wife and children. We'll go into that privately, you and I. Fetch. Take a look, will you? Believe it or not, Mr. Fetch here is something of a medical man. He might be practicing in London to this very day if the authorities hadn't found out about his little sideline, providing cadavers for the School of Medicine. He won't die from that wound, not unless it mortifies. If he comes around and makes a nuisance of himself. I'll see that it mortifies. Mrs. Boone, it's been a long time since my friends and I have enjoyed the pleasures of a good table. If you'd be so kind. Do what he says, Becky. And now, Mr. Boone, if you'll step outside with me, we'll have that private little talk. I don't suppose I need point out what will happen to your family if you try anything out here. What do you want me to do? This is likely to be a violent night. I want you to, uh, direct the violence away from us. What does that mean? Those four militiamen who were taking me to Salem, when they're found, it will appear they were killed by Indians. The Cherokee, to be more precise. My men had their instructions, plus a few little souvenirs taken from the Cherokee village we raided. All in all, the effect should be most convincing. It will appear that your friend Mingo betrayed the party so that I could be given over to the Cherokee for proper punishment. I think you can see what will happen when that bit of news is spread among the settlers. They'll try to find you and Mingo. Precisely. And they'll try to find us among the Cherokee. More than likely. They'll do their looking forcefully. You want to start another Indian war? We both know that a war between your settlers and the Cherokee can have but one outcome. When it's over, there'll be no one left to say what became of Simon Gore. And you expect me to help you? As I said, it's your family we're bargaining for. If you refuse to help, my men and I will leave at once. But of course, we'll uh, leave no one behind to say that we were here. If you do cooperate, you have my word that your wife and children will go with us as far as the first Creek encampment en route to the Mississippi. They're to be sold as slaves. Not the most attractive future, I'll agree. But they'll have their lives. Well, how does that strike you? Or there must be a special perdition arranged for men like you. Mr. Boone, if there is a life after death, I expect there will indeed be special accommodations for me. If that thought comforts you, you're welcome to it. Now, my proposition, is it yes or no? You need a little time to consider. That's understandable. Very well. Let's rejoin the others. Perhaps a quiet evening with your loved ones will help you decide. Ah, Moptichu, uh, you do not think that Savage is so bad a companion for supper? Huh? Hell don't care who feeds. Just don't know any better. 
Uh, and you, is your dislike of Sabbat greater than your hunger? Huh? Oh! <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> did you see how he did that to Sabbat, huh? Hey, that boy, you know, he's got spirit. Yeah. And he's very quick with his feet, you know. Now, in Marseille, where I grow up, we would take a boy like this and teach him to make the most of his talent. Leave him alone. Oh, please, don't be afraid. Uh, believe me, monsieur, I mean your children no harm. Then why don't you sit down and eat your supper? <laughs> hey, look, look, the leg, eh? It is the strongest limb in the body. If a man fights with his arm and his hand, he's not using his greatest strength, eh? So, you and I, I'm huh, a young friend, we are on the docks of Marseille. Oh, it's a very bad, bad place to be. And out of the darkness, an assassin comes. Look out! Here he comes! <laughs> He said he means the children no harm. Then tell him to sit down. Oh, you did not think I was going to hurt you? I was just going to show you. Come on over here. Come on, come on. You try to kick so high as your shoulders, eh? Come on, try. Oh, you think that I thought that you had spirit. Here I am willing to teach you the most perfect art of self-defense. Well, you refuse. Oh, to be in Marseille where the men truly understand each other. <laughs> Really, Mrs. Boone, there's no need for you and your family to go hungry. There seems to be plenty here. That's very generous of you, Mr. Gore. But I'm not hungry. The children, then. Don't you think you could eat something? I'm too scared to eat with them here. I wish they'd go. I know, Mom. I ain't scared, but Handler's. He's shivering. Why don't you put him outside? Likely he'd be happier out there. Ah, you waste of time going to the rendezvous every night. All the time to have you prison in Boonesboro. I go there. There's no one ever there. Five nights in a row. Tell him, tell him, man. Is not the truth what I say? Ask me, you can kiss that bounty man goodbye. And to talk along with it. Mr. Boone, I put it to you. For certain men, are not honor and a good name worth more than all the wealth of Solomon? Honor? I doubt you know the meaning of the word. Ah, but there you missed the mark, my friend. I understand it very well. And put it to use, you see. But these Philistines think that I have miscalculated. You're talking about honor among thieves. I'm not at all interested. But you should be most interested. After all, the decision you'll soon be making has to do with whether or not you accept my word of honor. Does it not? Well, the problem was this. Our little band had done with collecting certain mementos for which the authorities in Salem were currently paying 20 shillings each. He means scalps. Please, it's a little delicacy the sake of our gentler listeners. At any rate, we had them. And Salem had the money. And Salem has a price on the head of Simon Gore. The very heart of the matter. So, unable to do the thing myself, I must entrust the errand to one of my companions. But one of these three? <laughs> oh, no. But there is another one whom Petch has called the tough. A former naval officer who indulged in, shall we say, rather unspeakable disciplinary practices with a whip. Unfortunately, the poor man kept a diary, which I now possess. And by possessing the diary, I possess the top. Because there is literally nothing he will not do to keep that chronicle from his loving family. Simple? Taking scalps is just a sideline with you, Gore. What you like to deal in best is human souls. Aptly put, Mr. Boone. You see, he's agreeing with me. The top will return with the money if he is able to. All right, all right, I'll go. I still think it's a waste of time, but I'll go. Dan, Dan, it's like a, a nightmare. The Frenchman got on the odds are down, Lou. Trouble is, if I start anything, you and the children are right in the middle of it. Don't try anything with both of us unarmed, Daniel. Mr. Boone. A little louder there if you're going to talk, or else don't talk at all. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I'd forgotten how big the sky really is. Now I can understand why Father spent so much of his time here in Kentucky. It's a beautiful land. The Indians call it the dark and bloody ground. You call it beautiful. Yeah, maybe you're both right. I guess it all depends on just the way you look at it. It's just a whippoorwill. Now, why don't you relax? I suppose it's just waiting. Next, I guess I'll be seeing things. 
Mr. Dunstan, are you sure we're doing the right thing? I mean, Father didn't really send for me. Well, the only complete surprise, Andrew, is a, a perfect surprise. Now, uh, believe me, you're coming out here with me is the best thing that you could have done for your father, yourself, maybe even for me. What I mean? You know, you're getting very careless in your declining years, letting me come this close and uh, bringing a stranger with you. Well, he's a friend, so that nothing to worry about. Where's Gore? Waiting with the others. We uh, had a little trouble. The money, what is it? Where well, it's safe. Mr. Dunstan, I don't think I understand. Well, there's nothing to understand, Andrew. Your father's been detained elsewhere. I don't think we should keep him waiting now, should we? Uh, I could carry the money for you. When we get there, Savat. After you. Buttoned and ready for bed. But, Ma, where are you and Pa going to sleep? Well, I don't think your father and I will want much sleep tonight. Yes, now to the cupboard with you. I'm just putting the boy to bed. Can't you let us be long enough for that? I'm only admiring the construction of your cabin, Mrs. Bloom. No outside windows in this room? As you can see, there aren't. Yes, as it should be. We wouldn't want the lad taking a chill from too much night air, would we? Pleasant dreams, son. In the fire, very nicely, Mr. Boone. I've heard you speak since you came. Don't Gore let you talk? What's the matter? Don't he hear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. He can hear you all right. He just ain't got anything to say, that's all. Used to have plenty to say, though, didn't you, Parson? That's right, he was a Parson. A real man of the cloth. Ain't sure what kind of cloth, though. Some self-anointed variety, no doubt. I hear he was a wonder in his day, though. I hear he could preach an avalanche to a standstill. I hear he could sermonize a Caribbean hurricane to a soft spring breeze. Specialty. His real specialty was conversion. Bringing our heathen brethren back to the threshold of salvation. For a nominal fee, of course. I hear tell he saved over a thousand poor savage souls. Yes, sir, he'd wander right into their villages in the wildest coast of Africa. Follow me! Did you tell him, Parson? Follow me, brethren, and ye shall dwell in paradise. You know, they followed him. Didn't understand one word he said, but they followed him because of the way he said it. That was the magic to it. Yes, sir, a tongue that could talk the stars right down out of the heavens. A ruddy marvel he was. Of course, word finally got back to our poor heathen brethren that stayed behind, and our so-called Parsons road to salvation led to the hold of a slave ship bound for the swamps of Haiti. And he wandered in one village too many. Mm. They took away his magic. Right. That's enough. Petch, bring Boone over here. Someone's coming. The time for your decision is almost at hand, Mr. Boone. Don't answer him, Boone. I'd love to pull this trigger. Let me pull it. Well, Mr. Boone? Man owes his family everything you can give him within reason. He so don't have much choice. Get out of the way, you fat pig. You out of the way to see what it's like. Hey, you were right, you know, Mr. Simon. He was waiting at the rendezvous with our money. Count it. Simon, don't you recognize him? It's been a long time. Uh, Andrew. I, um... Uh, I want you to meet my friends, Andrew. First, the fine people who are letting us share their home this evening. Perhaps you've heard of the Boons. Daniel, uh, Rebecca. This is Andrew Paragor. My son. For you. For you. For you. And for the most beautiful of all. Me. <laughs> the most beautiful 
perhaps, but not the most trustworthy. Yes, Gentlemen. Out here on the frontier, we sometimes forget our manners. The pleasures of the counting house can wait, at least until you've been properly introduced. Dr. Miller Petch of London. Monsieur Henri Lepleche, whom you've already met. The Reverend Crookshank, whom we call the parson. And, of course, the top, Mr. William Dunstan. I want you to know, Simon, that young Andrew and I became fast friends on the trail from Salem. I don't think your Paul mentioned our daughter, Jemima. Our friend Mango is feeling a little poor on account of being shot by one of your Paul's friends here. Andrew, did Mr. Dunstan tell you anything of my activities? Well, there was no need for that. The boy uh, told me how you kept him informed by your letters. Is there something wrong, Father? You did want me to come, didn't you? Oh, of course, son, of course. Uh, I would planned on sending for you as soon as I was established in New Orleans, but uh, Mr. Dunstan was just a bit previous. I just wanted to give you a bit of a surprise, Simon. Yes. And so you have done. Becky, would you put on a little tea? I think Andy and Mr. Dunstan are my tired from their trip. Yes, certainly. Andrew, before you get too caught up in the Boone's hospitality, you better know that we are not precisely guests here. I wondered if you were going to let him in on that. Might take him by surprise if I made a sudden move and got myself killed for it. Killed? And indeed you would, Mr. Boone. Make no mistake about that. And any attempts to use my son will get yourself bound and gagged. Do you understand that? Oh, I doubt if anything Mr. Boone could say would change Andrew's high opinion of you. You should have heard him on our journey. Inspiring filial devotion. I'm delighted to hear of it. A man cherishes things like that. Oh, I quite agree with you. I'll take the feelings of love and mutual respect within my own family. I'd stop at nothing to preserve them. Oh, by the way, you've been keeping something for me. I'll take it off your hands now. Oh, yes, by all means. Mr. Dunstan and I are going out for a moment. Parson, um, the money will keep. Mr. Boone may not. This is far enough. You intend to shout and curse at me for bringing him here? Let them hear it inside. It's time the boy found out what you really are. It seems I've underestimated you. You've shown more imagination than I gave you credit for, Totten. Don't call me that. I'll just give you the diary and I'll be gone. The diary? Yes. I find it most impressive. You're discovering my son, realizing that I've kept my rather colorful career a secret from him and using that against me. Blackmail to fight blackmail, Simon. Sorry, Toffee, it can't be done. What do you mean it can't? You don't have it here, is that what you're saying? I'm saying that I don't have it anywhere. I threw it overboard. You did what? Well, I saw no reason to keep it once I convinced you that I had it. A few choice passages committed to memory. Casually dropped now and again. And your stupid guilt did the rest. All this time. All this time, I could have just walked away from you. That's all I had to do, just walk away. You're not human, Gore. You're the devil incarnate. Tonight, I've seen your one vulnerable spot. The boy. Andrew. Yes. And what do you intend to do about Andrew, Toffee? Toffee. New life, Andrew, in New Orleans. But Father, you're drinking Mr. Dunstan's tea. Why am I? Well, I don't think you'll mind. Can I help? Well, with your friends holding guns on us, I don't have much choice, do I? They're not my friends. I didn't know about this. And if you did? I'm sorry. Sorry. Is that all you'll feel when this is over? Sorry. I said I didn't know. Then maybe it's time you started knowing. Maybe it's time you started knowing your father as he really is. The boy. Will you make it easier? I don't know. She's working on it. She's your daughter, Daniel. There's no doubt about that.
After you fed us so well, Mrs. Bourne? Thanks, I could. We had no supper. Like you said, I haven't got much appetite. It'll get stale by morning. remember, I guess. Four or five different schools, a whole long list of boarding houses, and a letter every month. It's not enough, Andy. The truth isn't in letters. It's here and now. All you have to do is open your eyes. Jemima, he's my father. Then why didn't he tell you what he was doing? Why didn't he come to see you? Because of his work. Because he was traveling all the time. <laughs> traveling, ain't that the truth? All right, that's enough. There is a saying, my dear, that a teacher affects eternity. He can never tell when his influence stops. But I can tell you where yours stops. Here and now. And me, Father? Where do I stop? Andrew. Will it be a gag in my mouth, too? Or will it be a blindfold and a walk in the night with one of your friends? Andrew, that will do. Perhaps someday you'll be able to understand all this. How some men go one way in life and some another. How sometimes the struggle to survive in this world becomes more than a struggle. It becomes a fight and then a war. A bloody, unceasing war with no quarter asked or given. And that's how it is with you, Father? A war? Against whom? Against anyone, Andy. Against men, women, children, here, tonight. Against my family, against every family in Kentucky. As I said, son, perhaps someday you'll understand. Tonight, you'll just have to look away. Simon, men are coming. Many of them. Mr. Boone, it's time for your decision. And I assure you, the boys being here makes no difference. I did want to spare him some of the harsher realities, but survival comes first. Survival does come first, Gore. I'll talk to him. Battle, you there? It's yes. Well, looks like you boys are about ready to start a party. It happened. Cherokee took the ball, killed the four soldiers. Mingo must have walked them right into it. Still can't believe it. I sure never figured that Mingo would ever do a thing like this. No, neither did I. Best fetch pick liquor. The men would feel better with you leading them. Leading them where? To them murdering devils, that's where. Well, killing Gore's one thing, but them four soldiers, that's something else. Let them Cherokee get away with this, and it's just the beginning. Well, there'd be a fire that none of us could put out on. <laughs> now, what you're saying is we have to fight fire with fire. Teach them a lesson they'll never forget. Well, you'll have to teach them without me. What are you saying, Dan? I can't go with you. Well, if we don't hit them, they're liable to make up their minds to come after us. Well, when they do, I'll fight. Until they lift a hand against a Boonesboro man, I'm sworn by blood to uphold the peace. Peace? There ain't no peace. There are four dead men out there. Four Virginia men. No Boonesboro men. That's a mighty fine line, Daniel. None of your neighbors have ever had to draw it, and I doubt if they will. I think we've wasted enough time here. Well, you really ain't coming, Daniel? Seems like you don't need me much. Looks like you plan real neat military. All you got to do is surround the camp, hit them at daylight. Looks like you got yourself a real nice turkey shoot. Can't run from this. Nobody can. Good hunting, Ed. All right, that's your end of the bargain. We'll be leaving in a few moments. You and the children are going with us. Get ready. No, I won't go. Do what he says, please. Cheer up, son. We're on our way. To that new life we talked about. Don't be long. 
Come on, son. Father, please don't. Don't do this. There is no other way, Andrew. Come on. We'll all go. All of us together. Andrew! What gives you the right to tell me what to do? A new look at an old face? The other side of a childhood fantasy you call the truth? Look at me, boy! Look closely. Look at what I am. See yourself. And we're going. You and I. Unless you want to watch. Like an eagle as tall as a mountain was he. From 
the coon skin cap on the top of old Dan To the heel of his broad eye shoe The riffinest, roarinest, fightinest man The frontier ever knew Daniel Boone was a man Yes, a big man And he fought for America To make all Americans free What a boom, what a doer What a dream come a true What a boom, what a 